Apple recently announced that the iOS 16 public beta is available, but how is it performing on the iPhone SE second generation and what features are available? So let's start with the lock screen. This is the most major and noticeable change in this update and it is fully functional on this iPhone. The lock screen has a totally new interface with new fonts for the time, along with new widgets specifically designed for the lock screen. Notifications now come up through the bottom so that your wallpaper isn't obstructed. With the iOS 16, pretty much all elements of the lock screen are customizable. By simply long pressing on the lock screen when the iPhone is unlocked, a new interface appears allowing you to customize your lock screen and add new lock screens to switch between, similar to watch faces on an Apple Watch. So if we tap on Customize, the customizable areas get outlined. So let's start with the top portion widget. This allows you to add one small piece of information next to the date. This could be anything from the weather to stocks, calendar events, your reminders, etc. If we tap on the time, Apple gives us eight different fonts to choose from and a full color picker to completely customize the color to your liking. There's also another portion of widgets below the time which I find more useful. You can add widgets that are similar to the ones above the time but are more detailed. For instance, instead of one stock price, it can list three stock prices. Over time, more apps will create lock screen widgets, which will make the lock screen widgets even better. Moving on from the widgets, wallpapers can now also overlay the time to create a depth effect which works really impressively with any photo that has a distinction between the foreground and the background. Keep in mind that to use this feature, you cannot use the widgets below the time. Otherwise, this feature will be disabled, but that may change in a later beta. Wallpapers now also have different filters or photo styles by simply swiping through when customizing the lock screen. Speaking of wallpapers, there are several new wallpapers such as the live weather wallpaper, which dynamically changes throughout the day. There are also two different earth wallpapers, two moon wallpapers, and an astronomy wallpaper. There are also several emoji and color wallpapers. iOS 16 can also shuffle your own photos on the lock screen throughout the day in different intervals, such as every hour, every day, etc. You can always add more lock screens without losing the one you just customized. This really interlocks with the next feature which we will talk about. Now that we have multiple lock screens, we can actually link each one to a focus. So this would be useful when I have a focus mode enabled and I want a lock screen relating to that focus such as at work, when studying, etc. The music player is also completely redesigned to be more compact and to show the album art. This is part of the new Live Activities API. Live Activities is a new feature designed to reduce repeat notifications. For example, instead of getting tons of notifications for an ongoing sports game, Live Activities simply shows a widget on the lock screen that updates in real time. Moving on from the lock screen redesign, Focus also has some updates. Focuses can now be scheduled for time or location. Focus filters let you filter specific apps for each focus. For example, if I want to study, I may only want a specific tab group in Safari. Messages also now has some long requested features. You can now edit a message or undo sending a message up to 15 minutes after sending it. Messages can now also be marked as unread, and messages now also has a recently deleted section for messages deleted up to 30 days ago, similar to recently deleted in the photo app. SharePlay can now also be used while chatting in messages. Similar to messages, mail now also has the ability to undo send, but mail can now also schedule sending an email and remind you to get back to an email. Safari also has some minor changes. Tab groups can now have their own start page, and websites can now send web push notifications similar to macOS. There's also a new feature called passkeys. While I can't currently test it, passkeys will be a feature in iOS 16 which is meant to replace passwords. Instead of creating a password for a specific website, passkeys are designed to be safer since they can't be fished. It works with a private key stored on your device, which is used to log into the website. If you want to log into the account with a non-Apple device, the website will generate a QR code which you will scan with your Apple device to log in. Photos also has several refinements that I really like. Live text is now also available in videos while it used to be only for photos. The recently deleted album and hidden album are now locked and are only accessible if you verify through Touch ID. Duplicate detection lets you delete duplicate photos to clean up clutter in your library. Edits can now also be undone and redone which is really useful. Probably the most impressive new feature in photos is lift subject. By simply holding my finger on the subject of a photo, and it doesn't even have to be a portrait mode photo, the subject lifts from the photo and that gives me several options. 
I can drag and drop it somewhere such as messages to send it to somebody, or I can tap share and save it as a PNG or send it to someone. This makes generating PNG super simple and intuitive. The Home app is also completely redesigned with Matter support coming later in the year. Matter is a new standard for all smart home devices, which should make more devices compatible with HomeKit such as Nest thermostats. The keyboard now also has an option for haptic feedback, which I like, since the iPhone's haptic engine is really good. Quick Note is now also on the iPhone and can be used when clicking the share button in an app. For instance, let's say I tap the share button on a photo, I can add it to a Quick Note. You can now also have multiple watch lists in stocks. For example, I can have a tech watch list, an e-commerce watch list, etc. Locked notes can now also be unlocked with your iPhone passcode rather than using a specific notes app password. Security updates are now also applied without even running a whole software update, which is really great. So these are pretty much all the major features in iOS 16. There are also a ton of small changes in apps, which I'm not going to go into in this video, but they are available to review on apple.com, which I will link below. Pretty much all of the features in iOS 16 are available on the iPhone SE second generation due to the A13 chip. In regards to how it performs on the iPhone SE second generation, I do have to say that it is slightly slower and more stuttery than iOS 15. That is expected though since it is a beta, but don't expect to install it now and experience equal performance to iOS 15. It's definitely worse performance wise. In terms of bugs, I'm actually not experiencing a lot of bugs. I had a bug on the lock screen where the wallpaper turned black and another bug in photos where selecting multiple photos is laggy. Messages can also sometimes become unresponsive. Battery life is not that great. This iPhone is at 84% battery health and it definitely drains a good amount quicker than iOS 15. But it is a beta so it's expected. I am also experiencing some overheating. So if you have been thinking of getting the public beta for the iPhone SE second generation, I would say it depends. I am experiencing slightly worse performance, a tiny bit of bugs, worse battery life, and some overheating. But it can be different for everyone. So if you download the beta, just be aware that there's always the chance of it being better or worse than my experience. In terms of feature set, I'm not disappointed with the new features. I'm just disappointed with the quantity of new major features. Besides the new lock screen, lift subject from background and messages features, all the other features are kind of minor but still good improvements. I do wish we saw several major features other than just the new lock screen. But still, iOS 16 is a great update with extreme major changes to the lock screen, and I'm sure the final version will fix the issues I'm experiencing. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.